Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to learn that what is pruning. We will talk about static pruning and then we will learn about what is dynamic partition pruning. I am assuming here that you already know what is partitioning in Highwinds Path. If you don't know about it, then please see the relevant video on my channel. Let us understand pruning with an example. Suppose you have a table which have a huge amount of data. It has three columns, name, age, location. You have partitioned the table on location column. Since we have three different values in the table, Spark will divide the table into three parts. One part will have all the rows related to India. Other part will have all the rows related to UK. And the third part will have rows related to US. These three parts will be stored separately in three different files or folder. So what is the advantage of doing this? So if you hit a query, select star from table where location is equal to India, then Spark will know that it can only read file in which India's data is there and it doesn't need to read other files. This will save you from IO and your job's performance will be very good. To summarize this, when Spark reads data from any store, if the pruning is not enabled, read will happen from the store and after that the filtering of records will happen. If you have enabled pruning in Spark, then Spark will first filter the records and then read the data. This will make sure that there is no unwanted IO. This is also called predicate pushdown in Spark. This was all about static pruning. Static pruning because here we knew the filter before starting the query itself. Question time. Have you ever used static pruning in your project? And what was your use case? Post your answer in comment section. I will personally help you to prepare for big data interview. Now we will talk about dynamic pruning. Suppose you have a table which has data of all the COVID patients in the world. You have different columns like ID, age, name and location in that table. Now you have another table which has data of a country and how many patients are there in that country. So there is a simple mapping. This will have number of records equal to number of countries. Our COVID patient table, which is a huge table, which contains data of all the patients in the world is partitioned on the location. Our small table is not partitioned. Suppose I am interested to get details of patient from those countries where number of patients is more than one and a half million. So I will have a query like this. I will say select star from COVID patients, which has patient's data, inner join with patient count, where patient count is greater than one and a half million. So in absence of any kind of pruning, Spark will try to run it like this. Spark will read the data from smaller table. It will apply filter condition. And then there will be only US and India because in our previous table, only US and India had more than 1.5 million patients of COVID. Then Spark will try to join this with the bigger table. So the problem here is that the filter condition is on smaller table. Even though our bigger table is partitioned, we are not able to take advantage of any kind of partition pruning because the bigger table is partitioned on location column and our filter condition is on number of patients. Now, some of you will say, why are we not using broadcast join here? We have a small table which can be broadcasted into all the executors and we can reduce the shuffle and this will improve our performance. This is right. Broadcast join will help us here. It will improve the performance by reducing the shuffle. But broadcast join will not help us reducing the IO. So we have multiple executors. We have a copy of small table on all the executors. Spark will still be trying to join small table with the partition on each executor. You, we are not skipping any partition reading here. To increase the performance of my job, I am interested to do the broadcast join. That is the first level. At the second level, I am also interested to skip reading those partitions in which I know there is no data. This is where dynamic partition pruning is going to help us. So when dynamic partition pruning is enabled, the records which were filtered from the small table so US and India were the records which were filtered from small table. Those two records will be used by Spark to prune the partitions which are not relevant to read in bigger table. 
So Spark will dynamically create those filter condition and avoid reading the partitions which it is not interested. So this is why it is called dynamic partition pruning. So here the filtering condition that uh, which partition should be skipped while reading is being created at runtime. Great. So this was simple. In Spark to do text, Spark doesn't create filter condition dynamically. So you will not be able to filter those partitions at runtime. But in Spark 3, you have this capability that you can use broadcast join plus this filtering condition is generated at the runtime. So uh, the partitions can be pruned very easily at runtime. So this is the optimization that Spark 3 provides. This is called dynamic partition pruning. Question time. What is the threshold limit for data frame size to be eligible for broadcast join? So in summary, static partition can be used to skip unnecessary partitions. In static partition, you will know the filtering condition before running the query itself. But there could be situations when you don't know the filtering condition before starting your query. In those situations, dynamic partition pruning can help you. So dynamic partition pruning extends the concept of broadcast join and it combines static pruning with that. It generates the filtering condition at runtime and help you get performance benefit. In next video, we will write some code and do practical for partition pruning. Thank you and please subscribe to my channel.